Park Atrium at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh celebrating Spirit of Children with our friends from Spirit Halloween. Today, Spirit has brought hundreds of costumes to give out to our patients. In addition, they have brought some crafts to do. We're gonna paint some pumpkins, paint some masks. We also have a face painter that is here, take some pictures, and we're getting ready to play Spirit Bingo through our studio. We have been doing this event since 2007, and because of COVID, we have not been back since 2019, so we are very excited to be back this year. My favorite part of this event is the fact that the kids get to have fun and participate in the holiday that they wouldn't normally get to do, being stuck in the hospital, being sick. So they get to come and have a lot of fun, and we just enjoy doing it. Our patients are coming here on the worst day of their lives. Something has brought them to the hospital. That is not a normal part of childhood. So our job as child life is to take that stress and take that uncertainty and bring it back to something that is familiar and something that is normal. Events like this, especially with Spirit, because of how much they support our department, means the world to us, but also to our patients and families. So we are at McGee Women's Hospital um, doing a UPMC Pittsburgh Steelers cooking event. Which was awesome, by the way. It was awesome. Yes. A good, well-balanced diet is super important to maintaining good weight and nutritional status before, during, and after treatment. So today, uh, me and Calvin Austin and uh, still the organization came out to support the women um, with breast cancer and it was an enjoyable experience being able to just come and uh, be side by side with these women and just tell them we support them. We really appreciate the Steelers taking time to do this. This is incredible and it means so much to us like we are going through the battle and just like being here to support us and, and just kind of help us take better care of ourselves too. <laughs> 20 years ago, the Supportive Care Program, which is a pediatric palliative care program, was started at UPMC Children's Hospital. And we as a team wanted to celebrate, but also to express our gratitude to the members of the hospital, the leadership, our volunteers, our staff, our donors. Our children have life-limiting, life-threatening illnesses and they may not live through childhood. We also have a comprehensive bereavement program and we follow families for many years after the loss of their child. But we also help with chronically ill children and make sure that they have their needs met with symptoms or other types of support. My son passed away in the Children's Hospital in 2002. At that time, there was no supportive or palliative care. And as a family, we really felt like we could have used the kind of care that comes from supportive and palliative care. So I'm really happy to say that here we are 20 years later, that no family will have to go without that important care for their child. I've been able to see the lives of the children and the families that we take care of transform in a way where the focus is less on the medical problems and back to the child and the family and helping parents and children identify what their values are and, and what's important to them and what can we make better today for you right now. And over the last 13 years that I've been a part of the program, I've seen us be able to reach more and more and more families because we have the ability and the staffing in order to do that. That's been the most gratifying thing to me, just seeing how many more children and families that we can reach and help on a daily basis. It's unbelievably amazing to me that we are able to help as many families as we are. We wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the people that we're celebrating today, so I just wanted to say thank you to them all. It is amazing to see the people that have been able to support us through the years. So the Hospital First Receiver Program is designed to have our members step into an incident, whether it's a chemical or radiological event, and develop a good understanding of chemical, radiological, contamination or exposure recognition. How to protect themselves, how to protect their partners, how to protect their patients, properly decontaminate those patients while protecting the house. We take them through several steps. We take them through that recognition portion first, and then we step them into their, their gear, what they work with, their pappers, the hoods, their filters, their chemically resistant boots and their gloves. We teach them how to properly don or put that, that gear on or doff and take it off and how to effectively take it off without cross-contaminating themselves. 
Additionally, we take them through the decontamination process, both through what we call technical decontamination and a secondary decontamination. The secondary decontamination is designed for victims that have not received decontamination prior to coming to the hospital. So we, we go ahead and we isolate those, those patients or those victims. We remove their clothing. We take them through a three-step shower process. And then after that shower process, they come out, those patients or victims will now be dried, redressed, they will be medically reassessed. And after that reassessment, disposition is made as to whether or not we can keep them in the hospital, send them home, or if they have to go to another facility. The, the first receivers themselves obviously have to be decontaminated. So they go through what we call technical decontamination process where they're walked into a shower and they're much like our victims, they're decontaminated from head to toe. Um, they go through a rinse process, then they're scrubbed, then they're rinsed, then they're scrubbed and rinsed again. And then we put them into a neutral area where that gear is removed from them. And then after that gear is removed, that gear is isolated, our staff, just like our patients or victims, now go into an area where now they're gonna be medically reassessed. We're gonna go ahead and get their vital signs and make sure that their blood pressure, their pulse or respirations are good. We're gonna rehydrate them with water, get them some salty snacks, and keep them for about a half an hour, depending on the operation, and just make sure that they're, they're doing okay.